What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Floyd Street's Finest, presented by Great Flood Brewing Company. I'm your host and your friend, Jeff Greer. So happy to have you back for another episode. We have a great guest today in ESPN College Basketball Insider, Jeff Borzello. Uh, we will obviously, uh, what do you think we're going to talk about? Got any guesses? We're going to talk about the coaching search. Uh, this episode will come out presumably before anybody is hired. Uh, we're recording this literally in the middle of Louisville's uh, first ACC tournament game. Uh, yes, I have it on in the background. No, I'm not really watching it that closely, um, but uh, they are playing well as of right now. So uh, I will tune into the remainder of the game and uh, we'll see if they advance to play on Wednesday. Can they get five in a row? Five wins, five days. I'm not betting on, um, but we'll see. I mean, good for them if they can if they can hold on and beat uh, Georgia Tech here, which um, actually they're winning rather soundly. So if that continues, good for Louisville. Um, you want to end the season on some better vibes than I, I realize that things have been uh, for the program. You feel for the kids. You feel for the uh, young men. They're not kids. Uh, you feel for the coaches who have been involved um, in, in all of this, just trying to get to the end of the season and try to keep their team motivated. And it's been really difficult. So um, here's hoping for them, for their sake, uh, that, uh, that this week goes well for them. Uh, but we do, are going to talk to Jeff Borzello. And, and of course, I would be remiss to not at, get some sleepers uh, for the NCAA tournament from him. Uh, some some teams that we should be paying attention to. I'm trying to help us all out. It, we do live in Louisville. Even if Louisville's not in the NCAA tournament, every office is going to be jam-packed with bracket competitions. So uh, I'm trying to help you out uh, by getting uh, someone who knows uh, college basketball as well as anyone else uh, to get some picks out there. And we also talk a little bit about the ACC and, and why maybe it's been down. Um, some theories on that and where it might be headed. And obviously Louisville's role in, in possibly helping it get back to what we all think it should be, which is with the Big East being what it is now uh, versus what it used to be, uh, the ACC should be the best conference in college basketball, historically, traditionally, um, but it just has not lived up to that billing now for a couple of years. Before we get to Jeff, uh, I do want to just kind of reset. I wrote this in my newsletter, which if you have not subscribed to it yet, please do jeffgreer.substack.com. It comes out every Thursday morning at 5 a.m. on the dot, unless my parents are in town, in which case it'll come out at like 7 a.m. Um, I'm not even joking. That has been like three times that that has happened. And every time it's because my parents are in town. Um, I'm also trying to put out some bonus newsletters as the coaching search kicks into high um, gear here. I know that we have seen a lot of swerves. Uh, we have heard that things are done. We have been told that uh, that um, people, that, that it's always been Kenny Payne, that uh, Kenny Payne has been hired. Um, I can assure you he has not been hired. Uh, what I think might be the disconnect with some folks is maybe there are like terms that have been discussed uh, through proxies, through intermediaries, I, I don't know. Uh, and that has been misinterpreted by people behind the scenes as something being final. Louisville is not there yet. Uh, as of this recording on Tuesday night, they are not there yet. Josh Hurd has spent a lot of time on the phones over the last few weeks, as Jeff is going to get to, and we talk about, and I have written about and talked about, uh, trying to get kind of the lay of the land, which is all completely normal no coaching search uh, that you can point to uh, would have made a hire by now. It just does, that doesn't work like that in college basketball because they are pursuing not only Kenny Payne, who is working right now too in the NBA, uh, but also pursuing coaches who have teams that are competing uh, in their conference tournaments and then NCAA tournaments. And those guys are real busy. So it's going to be harder to try to track them down and get to those interviews. So we're at the point right now where I can honestly tell you that I think Louisville will be able to pay a pretty good salary, a competitive salary for what, for what Louisville is. I think they will steer away from some huge buyouts. Uh, I'd love to know a couple of the buyouts that we don't really know uh, right now where they are and what they might be uh, private schools. Um, but I, I think that Louisville certainly is going to be able to make a good hire uh, with a lot of due diligence and offer a lot uh, with this program. And again, we get to all of that uh, in the uh, conversation with Jeff. The only other thing I would just say is just be careful. Just be careful because 
there is a desire to be first. I am as competitive as everyone. Uh, I would like to be, uh, I would like to be the first person to point out who the coach is going to be or point out who the interviews are. Um, but just, you know, just be mindful. Think twice before you get very excited about stuff because I'm guilty of doing this too uh, with teams that I root for. Um, just, you got to be careful. Make sure you ver you've got a, a source that has a track record, a, a source of information that has a track record that you can trust uh, because otherwise it just creates situations like the one we have right now where there's a significant portion of the fan base in my purview. Um, I'm not saying it's the majority. It's a portion of the fan base that is convinced that it's Kenny Payne and only Kenny Payne. And if, you know, for some reason it's not Kenny Payne, it seems like those people are going to be furious and that does nobody any good um, in your fan base uh, when you're trying to unite a group of people uh, uh, behind a coach and behind an athletics department moving forward. So that would be my advice, but you can all, of course tell me to buzz off. I am not a, a, a Louisville guy. I, I love covering the team. I love Louisville fans. I love interacting with all of you. And I try to do my best to be objective and thorough in talking about the team uh, and getting as much information to you that I can uh, that uh, is from adults in the room that I trust uh, is the way I phrase it usually. Um, so let's get to that conversation with Jeff. Before we do that, first and foremost, um, I wanna tell you about our friends over at Great Flood. We mentioned them at the top of the show. Now is the time to get in on Great Flood and the offerings they have uh, during all televised Cardinal women's and men's basketball games. There's uh, still a chance by the time you listen to this, Louisville men could still be playing. We know the Louisville women will be playing into the NCAA tournament. Their drinks 10% cheaper for the entirety of the game. This pricing is available at both our Highlands Tap Room and the Middletown Restaurant. We love hosting you, and we can't wait to root along with you as we cheer on our Cardinals. Thank you for your loyal support and go cards. And of course, as a side note, I always mention this guys uh, that this is a great time to check out their expanded options in the tap room for the first time in seven years are offering wine by the glass or bottle. And uh, of course, liquor and cocktail menus, as we've mentioned, will be out there. You will be able to track them down and order off of them. Um, if you're not a beer person or if you're going with someone who's a beer person, take advantage. Uh, and by the way, Sundays at either location, they have a bottomless mimosas. Another group I wanna tell you about is our partners over at Bet Rivers Sportsbook. Just like you got to go get drinking at Great Flood, uh, hop on to Bet River Sportsbook and check out what they have. It's the perfect time to do that. If you haven't signed up yet, like I said, now is the time. They're offering $250 match bonus for your first deposit. And what sets them apart is they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money with their new rush pay instant approval withdrawing your winnings is safer, more secure, and more reliable. And with basketball season very much taking center stage, especially with baseball punting. I don't, can't afford to do that, Major League Baseball. The fan base is already dwindling as it is. Um, get in on the action by going to betrivers.com today or by downloading the Bet Rivers iOS app. And of course, you've got to be 21 years or older. And if you have a gambling problem, please call one 800 gambler so here is jeff borzello joining us on this week's episode of floyd street's finest all right we are welcomed by uh, the one and only jeff borzello uh from espn and uh, jeffrey the last time we talked uh it was not the current situation at louisville uh so there's plenty to catch up on um talking about uh, the coaching search and uh, yeah, lots of rumors, lots of things flying around. So we're going to get to that. That's the primary reason that you're on. But we're college hoops fans here in Louisville. And I know a lot of people are, are going to be following the tournament, even if their favorite home team uh, is not in it. Uh, so I want to start this conversation, Jeff, uh, with the ACC, because it's been kind of a hot topic this season about how bad it's been. It's really been bad now for a couple of seasons, uh, and it's kind of been building to this what do you think is is wrong right now with the ACC? Why, why do you think it has arrived here? And I guess what's the pathway back to uh, to being the ACC of old? Well, I, I think that, I mean, it's easy to say, but the ACC cannot be the ACC if Carolina is having a subpar year, 
if Virginia's having a subpar year, if Louisville's having a subpar year, and if Syracuse is having a subpar year. Like, I think they need two or three of those schools to be good pretty much every year. I mean, you're not going to be able to count on Wake Forest and Miami, Notre Dame. Like, those teams are not going to be – maybe under Steve Forbes, Wake Forest will be in the mix every year. But they're going to need some of those perennial powerhouses to come back and, and be, you know – consistent year over year i mean virginia we we think we can count on every year they haven't been great for a couple of years now mm-hmm. louisville obviously has some rebuilding to do i mean carolina we'll see what what you know hubert davis does and then you know, duke is kind of the wild card i mean we expect they're going to be good under shire because they're bringing in a ton of talent but you know they might have some growing pains year one and if duke starts kind of going if duke was not duke this year imagine what we would think of the acc i mean it, it would be a mess yeah um and and so i mean i don't think next year is going to be all that much better for the ACC um you know I think that we're going to see some you know stabilization from from some of the powers but I don't know if we're gonna we're gonna be seeing you know three four teams in the top 10 top 15 like we did five seven years ago well first of all I'm offended that in your list of powerhouses you didn't include Pittsburgh also needing to be good uh, they the uh, they got a couple yeah, issues they got a couple issues a couple issues yeah. Yeah, a couple to about $15 million worth of issues uh, right now. Um, but here's, let me ask you this, Jeff. Do you, is it recruiting misses? Do you think it's been bad coaching hires? I mean, I, I realize like Tony Bennett has been there and obviously has had a lot of success at Virginia. So it's maybe just a couple of years of roster misses, I guess. It's just odd that it's all coming together at the same time. I know there's a coaching change at UNC and there's going to be uh, one after this season at Duke. We know what Louisville has, has been going through, but like Virginia, what do you Virginia, Virginia to? The Virginia one is kind of weird because, I mean, we, we kind of do the, you know, I believe in Tony Bennett and, and whatever he has, they're going to win. Um, and that's why people picked them in the top 25 millions of the year, knowing that they had like literally four players, like four players that we could count on. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I'm not going to say they missed on the recruiting trail. It's just kind of the way Tony Bennett recruits. But he he didn't get – I mean, when they had their final four year, you know, Kyle Guy, Ty Jerome, uh, DeAndre Hunter, they were all top 50-ish kids coming yeah. out of high school. You know, it's not like he discovered three-star kids and made them all Americans. Like, that team had pros on it. Um, and they're just – they don't have that right now. Um, you know, Armand Franklin's been solid and Jaden Garner's been pretty good and Kihei Clark's been good and Reese Beekman's been elite defensively. Mm-hmm. But again, they, you know, they just didn't have seven, eight, nine ACC caliber players on the roster. Does that change next year? I'm not really sure. I just, I don't know. You know, I'm not going to say he caught, you know, lightning in a bottle getting three top 50 players at Virginia um, because I, I still think he's a hell of a coach and, and you know, his, his track record, track record of success speaks for itself. But um, they clearly don't have the talent that they did four or five years ago. Um, are there other programs that you think are, you mentioned Wake Forest, like, does it feel like they're probably the one that I would point to as like the most likely to be staying in the, in the upper echelon, yeah. uh, consistently guys, well, as long as Steve Forbes is there. Well, you're gonna have to find schools that are going to recruit the transfer portal effectively. Mm-hmm. Steve Forbes has been at a, you know a million different schools and he's recruited a million different <laughs> levels and you know he's he's done a really good job doing it. And so you know Virginia cannot take all the transfer that everyone else can take. Um, you know, and some some of the the older coaches in the league are maybe not as as I guess well versed at taking transfers um, as, as you know as Steve Forbes is. So you know I think that's probably going to be the biggest thing moving forward is who can navigate the transfer portal the best. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think Forbes is going to be really good at it now, you know, there, there could be some coaching changes coming soon. And so we'll see what happens. And, you know, Clemson's up in the air, NC state got a, a vote of confidence and Pitt. Um, like I said, I got a vote of confidence, but they, like you said, they have $15 million worth of, uh, of, of reasons to keep Jeff Capel. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, I, I think there is, and obviously Louisville has, has to hire a coach. So mm-hmm. there are some kind of, you know, shifts and changes in the league and you combine that with with the portal and the and nil and things like that and it's just kind of a, a a transformative time in college basketball and the acc needs to to kind of catch up yeah yeah I, it, it's it's probably one of the more fascinating big picture stories i think in college basketball um over the next couple of years is figuring out how the league can uh, get back to being what it was because 
like five, well, six I mean, look, years and also ago. Look at fun. Syracuse. Like, is, is Syracuse, yeah. what's their staying power uh, mm-hmm. over the next six years? Like, how long is Jim Beheim going to be there for? Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's going to be kind of a, you know, there's no Roy Williams, there's no Coach K. You know, Beheim's not going to be around forever. Like, it's, it's, there's some changes coming to the league. Yeah. Well, and also, like, Virginia Tech was supposed to be good this year, and they've been not nearly what we right. thought they would be. Um, well, let me ask you this. Uh, we did this last week. Uh, it's, it's that time of year. We obviously don't have a bracket in front of us, so everyone should treat our picks with a grain of salt. Um, no, no grain of them. salt. Okay. No, all right. Should, all right. Trust little, everything we said. Okay. Fine. Fine. All right. Um, we're talking herbs. It's like eating a salad, right? Um, give me your two, give me like one or two teams that you have an eye on that you would classify as a sleeper, uh, in the NCAA tournament. Now, I guess for, sleeper me, for like final four sleeper to get to, let's call it the second weekend sleeper to sleeper to surprise some people and get to the second weekend. Now I've got to also say this, like you could say uh, North Carolina because nobody really thinks that they're going to make a big run in the NCAA tournament. I'm not going to say them. Don't worry. I'm just, I'm giving you an example or like a big school that has maybe underperformed, or you could say a Murray state, a Colorado state. Uh, teams I'm going like to give you a few. I'm going to, I'm going right, to take right, the race. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the wheel from here. All right. I'm going to give you a couple of teams that I think are sleepers to make the second week. And I'm going to give you two sleepers to make the final four. I'm going to cover okay. all our bases. Oh man. Like sleepers right. to make the second weekend. And not really sleep anymore because they're they're they got a ton of buzz right now. It's Memphis. Um, ah, yeah, okay. You know, a month a month ago, we probably would have written them off, written that Penny off, written everybody off. They're doing exactly what they did last year, except this time they beat Houston. Last year, I think they won eleven of their final thirteen games, missed the tournament because they lost to Memphis on a buzzer beater twice. I mean, I lost to Houston on a on a buzzer beater last second shot twice. This year, they beat Memphis and beat Houston twice. They're going to make the tournament. And Penny got back to what. They, he had success with his first couple of years, which was shortening his rotation, locking in defensively, pressure defense, and kind of dictating the tempo, dictating the, um, the situation on the opponent, which is he kind of got away from that a little bit early because he kind of had to cater a little bit to Imani Bates, cater to Jalen Duran, who's been playing tremendously lately. Bates obviously has not played at all. Mm-hmm. So I think that they're hitting their stride at the right time. Another team who I think will probably get a six or a seven seed, maybe an eight, is Seton Hall. And if I'm a mm-hmm. one or a two seed, I, I it's it's going to be miserable playing. Coached that, playing by that. who's the coach there? Kevin Willard. Kevin uh, Willard, potential yeah. potential Louisville candidate, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, on a two, if you're a one or a two and you're playing Seton Hall on a two day turnaround, I mean, they're a monster. I mean, like they're physical, they're old, they're tall. Um, they have a couple of guys. Kadari Richmond looks like he's going to be healthy. They have him, Jared mm-hmm. Roden. Both guys can can get their own shots. They hit a little bit of a slump in middle of Big East play when Bryce Aiken got hurt or got a concussion. He's not back yet, but I think they figured out how to play without him. And I think that's kind of been important for them moving forward. But again, I just think they're, they're just brutal to play, um, especially on a short turnaround. And then two teams who will not be favored to make the final four, but I think are, you know, quote unquote sleepers would be Iowa and Tennessee. Ah, Um, Iowa going into the Illinois game on Sunday, which they lost late. They were the second best team in the country since February 1st, according to to metrics at at, um, barktorvik.com. Elite offensively. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Elite (laughs) offensively, uh, better defense than they've been in the past, uh, a little bit more balance. And Keegan Murray is is just elite, just a a tremendous matchup problem. And so I think that the way they're playing uh, when fully healthy, uh, you know, might be the best team in the Big Ten or the Big Ten's best bet to make the Final Four. And then Tennessee – not getting as much attention as Kentucky and Auburn, probably not getting as mm-hmm. much attention as Arkansas, uh, given the way Arkansas is playing. But mm-hmm. Tennessee has been unbelievable defensively all year. And now they've got Santiago Vescovi, Vescovi, however you pronounce it. He's playing really, really well. Kennedy Chandler, the freshman's playing well. And then Zakai Ziegler, another freshman. When they play Chandler and Ziegler together, that kind of two-point guard system, it just puts a lot of pressure on the opponent at both ends of the floor. And, and I think Rick Barnes has kind of found something with those two. So. Uh, yeah, Tennessee and okay. Iowa or eh, my, my final four sleepers. Yeah. All right. I've, I've, I'm, I'm jotting this down. Like Jose, you're certainly, not, you're certainly not jotting it down. I, I did. Jot, I actually have written some of it down. That's, that's, there's a, there's a little uh, pad here with some writing on it. It's not a, a pad. Little, that's, uh, that's one sheet of paper. It's an you expired, stole, it's an expired envelope. Uh, you stole, you stole really, from your son, his drawing paper. That's, just that's that true. Um, he can hardly even grip anything yet. So I don't know how he's got drawing paper. Uh, all right. I'm going to tell you two teams that I have been 
locked in on since the start of the season. And I bet I can name one of them. You uh, tell, give it to me. You know who one of Colorado them? Colorado State. Boom. All right. Here's why I like I picked Colorado them to win, State. I picked them to win the Mountain West. I think they're going to win the Mountain West uh, tournament. And but what I what I like about them is this is it, we're going on vibes only here. I, I that's, always that's when, to pick when your teams yeah. when teams surprise and go to the to the like the Sweet Sixteen out of a conference that is not one of the Power Six um, leagues. To me, it always seems like there's uh, there's a, a kind of a um, jack of all trades star who kind of doesn't fit the mold of what you think of a of a power six, you know, power forward or or a weird combo guard, and that's David Roddy, who is this like former high school quarterback, really good passer of the ball, does a lot of things around the rim. He can play in the post, but he can uh, spread it out. Um, and then he's got a really good point guard in Isaiah Stevens. I, I love that team. They've got good players around them. The other team, I'm going to go Homer uh, for Kentucky-based uh, folks and say Murray State is going to be a handful. I realize they're not really a sleeper at this point. I they're thought you're going to say Bellman. Uh, they can't get in. I know. That's a, that know. is some it's, fucking it's BS. And I'm allowed to swear it's my podcast. That is, is some your BS that they. The can't. whole the whole Atlantic Sun rule is just like, hey, I don't know why they're in this conference tournament, and then to let the team in that lost to the team that made the title game. What are you doing? It's just a weird deal all around. It makes no sense. Uh, Sorry, I, cut no sense. I cut you off. Talk I cut you off. I would have uh, Bellerman. Yeah, Bellerman is a team that is going to be around for a long time and will be in future NCAA tournaments. I just like Murray State. I like the way they play. They've also got uh, kind of a two-headed monster, but they've got good talent around them. Um, and I think they're going to be the type of team that goes into the tournament and you put them on – an eight, nine line. And they're going to be across from a, a power six school that went 10 and 10 in their league. And they're going to be like, you really think that we're going to be afraid of playing this team right now? No, they've got legit size too. It's not like yeah. some, you know, mid major. I mean, like even Colorado State, we just talked about, like they don't have a ton of size. Like what was it? KJ Williams, mm-hmm. like six eleven, and he's terrific. Yeah. But Murray State's got like legit, legit high major size up front. Yeah. Well, that's a good segue because uh, Murray State is coached by Matt McMahon uh, and Matt McMahon is uh, one of a handful of names that uh, have come up over the past six or seven weeks. And and I think we both know that a lot of it is uh, you use the phrase whispers. I use the phrase Love whispers. R- rumblings, uh, whispers, buzz, chatter, scuttlebutt. Uh, <laughs> I used to love the word scuttle. I've kind of gone away from it a little bit now i'm all i'm all about whispers and talk now i love it i love it um there's been a couple names that have been consistently connected to the louisville job um and there have been a couple new names that that surfaced originally when everybody put out their like 15 coach list of who might be considered they went away for a while now they're back first and foremost um i'll ask you a two-part question jeff first first question is how much do you think the fact that these names have kind of seesawed in and out of all this. Uh, and I know we've talked about this offline is kind of just filling the void because nothing has really picked up just yet. Uh, and how much of it is that these people might actually be interested. And second fold um, just in your conversations w- with agents and basketball people, like how would you describe the level of interest in the Louisville job as uh, being what it can be, uh, versus I realized that it's kind of taken a reputational hit uh, the last couple of years because of the headlines that have come up over the last five or six years. Well, the, to the first point is, I think a lot of it is to fill the void. Like, I don't think that um, that the the Louisville decision makers are sitting there every day with a board and like moving guys up and down. Like, yeah, you know, I just don't think that's happening. Wouldn't it be um, great if it was though? That would, yeah, be <laughs> they had fun. each name and they were just yeah. every day Power they walked rankings. in. You're like, you know what? He's my number two today. <laughs> like, I don't think that's happening um, at all. I do think. I mean, I think that you know, Josh is obviously he's making calls, and and that's so. Let's go back and 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 just kind of, you know, the Kenny Payne stuff early. Like mm-hmm. that was never going to be the case. They were not going to you know, have a deal with him done within a week or whatever after Chris Mack got, you know, parted ways after they parted ways, that was never mm-hmm. going to happen. Um, and then I don't think that suddenly, you know, Louisville was, was, you know, Oh, we're, we're not hiring Kenny Payne or, you know, we are high. I don't, I don't think that <laughs> that kind of ever happened in the first like two weeks after, you know, they needed a coach. I think that, that they've taken their time and they've sounded out a lot of people. I mean, 
and I, I think you have pretty similar information, you know, within the past week or two, it, they've been making calls and sounding out more potential candidates. Mm -hmm. um, that's not saying that they're never going to, you know, hire Kenny Payne or they're not interested in Mick Cronin or anything like that. It's just, they're doing their due diligence. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that's a lot of it, you know, they have, and they did get a head start on most of the competition and, you know, people could say, well, why, why do you want a head start if you're not going to take advantage of it? It doesn't, I mean, like, if you look at the other jobs that are going to open up, they're not competing against Georgia for candidates. They're not going to compete against <laughs> Missouri for candidates for the most part. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, Maryland maybe, but Maryland also had a head start and they had an earlier head start than Louisville. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like they have a pretty different list of candidates from, you know, from what we're hearing. Yeah, um, you know, Louisville is, is a better job than all of those. Um, and, and that goes to your second point. It's not, it's not the borderline blue blood that it was maybe five years ago. It can be. I don't just don't think right now it is. The perception is not that for coaches. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't know who your AD is going to be. You're not, you don't know who your president's going to be. You don't know what the, what's the, what's going to happen with the NCAA. Um, there's just a lot of kind of questions that you have to answer. And if you are, you know, a Mick Cronin, a Scott Drew, a Chris Holtman, whoever, who's at a pretty good, all of them at pretty good spots and, and all can be considered, well, UCLA is a top five, top 10 job. And yeah, Ohio State's definitely. in that same mix. And, Scott Drew's turned Baylor into a monster. Um, you know, you kind of have to answer those questions if, if you are really interested in that in the job. You, you know, you're going to look at Louisville and say, you know, if, if, I, if I don't have answers to those questions, am I 100% leaving? And so I think that that gives some level of, of trepidation to some of the, the high profile names. But I, I mean, it's like I said, it's still the best job on the market. Yeah. And it's going to be provided, you know, I, don't, I can't even think of a job that would open to rival it. Um, just because we've seen, you know, Duke and Carolina and UCLA and Arizona and Indiana all filled in the past two years. Mm -hmm. um, and Louisville is probably next on that list. So yeah. I, I think that they can take their time knowing that who they want is going to be there whenever they end up making a decision. And, and you know, for the for the Kenny Payne stuff, I think that if, you know, I, I think that they are exhausting other options, um, not before him, not after him, anything like that, but they're talking to other people. Mm -hmm. but and, and it was on your podcast where he said it, where, where Josh said it was that, you know, we would like to have somebody in place when our season ends, our being Louisville's. That could be, you know, Tuesday night. It could be Wednesday night, whenever. Um, and so yeah, as of this recording, they were, they were winning when before we were they're winning at halftime. Yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> but I mean, I got my point would be that, you know, I think if, if they don't have a hire in place in the next week, I think we can kind of maybe assume that, they're kind of going to take some big swings at guys that are still in the NCAA tournament. Well, that, that's the thing that's interesting about all of this. And I'd love to get your thoughts on the, on the search firm side of it too, because um, they've always maintained that they would like to interview three or four. Uh, that's just a handful of candidates. That, yeah. that was kind of always the, the mindset was that uh, Kenny Payne was probably almost not even probably was basically definitely going to be, a yeah. candidate uh, that they interview. There's no question about that. Um, it's just a matter of who are the other two, three, four guys that they would talk to. How common is it uh, for a formal interview with an AD, or do you think the work would be done through an, like an interview with, with the search firm? How, how would you think that that approach would be uh, followed in terms of typically in, in these situations? I mean, typically they're, you know, they're going to sound out a lot of people, maybe have Zoom interviews. I mean, you can look at, I believe, Illinois State. Obviously, it's not Louisville, but they're probably, I mean, I think they had Zooms with 10 or 12 guys. And then they didn't end up narrowing it down from there. But a lot of places will start with, we're going to kind of cast a wide net. We'll talk to a lot of people, a lot of agents, gauge interest, things like that. You know, a dozen people, maybe. Then they'll narrow it down, second interview, you know, five, six guys. And then sometimes they'll go out and they'll, meet in person mm -hmm. the ad or search i mean and search firm the ad sits on a lot in on a lot of the search firm interviews usually um and again it also depends on how hands-on the search firm is i mean some places hire search firms just to do background um you know just as kind of a buffer to to make sure everything is is fine with I the guy i think they that's want. how louisville is i think yeah. that's what louisville's approach is yeah i mean that's that a lot of places will do that. i mean some places will hire them to do everything and, and do interviews and recommend people and all that stuff um, you know, if, if it's, if what you say is correct and I have no reason to doubt it, then, you know, then I'd imagine that the Louisville decision makers will be in on every zoom interview, every in-person interview, every phone call, um, that they're doing. 
Um, and so, you know, everything we've heard, both you and I, I think, is that they're taking their time. They have not done a ton in terms of, you know, eliminating guys and cutting down mm-hmm. lists and anything like that. So I still think that they're probably canvassing and kind of casting that wide net that I talked about originally. And then eventually I think they're going to get to probably five or six. And then, you know, during the tournament, I'd imagine if, if this kind of keeps going on, they'll probably zero in on a couple of guys and, and do in-person interviews. And, and I think at some point, if they do really want to get a Mick Cronin, a Scott Drew, a Holtman, they could wait for them to lose and, and then really kind of gauge their interest and, and mm-hmm. really, you know, start asking serious questions right now. And any of them could say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd be interested. We'll, we'll see what happens after the season. But at some point, right. Louisville is going to need a real answer. Um, and so I, I still think that they would like to kind of, you know, at least kind of check some of those boxes of those top guys to see if there is real interest from any of them. At this point, uh, we, uh, would you take Kenny Payne or the field? Um, if, you t- me a week, tough. if you asked me a week ago, I would have said, and I think I did on the field of 68 after dark, I would have said Kenny Payne partner um, podcast. Yeah. O- o- over the field. I probably would have said Kenny Payne. Now I would probably say the field. Um, right. It just seems that there's kind of, you know, new names being whispered, about, you know, about uh, for the job and a little bit of discussion of other guys and, and, you know, not that they're moving away from Kenny Payne, but part of the reason I kept thinking Kenny Payne is I didn't really hear any other legitimate names. Mm. Um, you know, I never really bought into the Scott Drew hype and I could be very wrong about that. Mm-hmm. And the Mick Cronin stuff, and he's got a big buyout, and he's at UCLA, and they might win four games in the tournament. Like, he might not be able to decide for a, a month. Um, and so not hearing other legitimate names kind of made me think, all right, well, maybe Kenny Payne really is the guy. But now you're hearing a couple more names. You know, you've already mentioned mm-hmm. Willard and McMahon. Um, you know, I've mentioned Holtman, and, and obviously Drew and Cronin are still there, and other guys are going to pop up. Like, the more names you hear, the more you think, okay, there's, they, they might be exploring a lot of options here. And so for that reason, I'd probably take the field. Do you think that there's... What about you? What, 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 what are you taking? Oh. Um, you, really didn't want, you really didn't want me to turn the question Yeah, on, I, Yeah. Oh, how the turns have tabled. Um, <laughs> I, I put it in my newsletter that I would still bet on pain, but... It's it's kind of like early in a primary season where a guy's polling right. at like twenty five percent. Well, yeah. I was gonna say if you told me to take Payne or any other candidate, I would take Payne. Yeah, but, yeah, head to head. But but, but Kenny Payne all... or the field, I'm I'm probably yeah. taking the field. Kenny Payne or the field, it's probably like seventy thirty field uh, or like yeah. seventy five twenty five field. Yeah, um, but I think he's the leader of the options just because I'm with you. Like I, I don't. I have no idea what level of interest uh, some of these guys have. Right. I have been told that the interest uh, in being the guy at Louisville is actually uh, has been kind of a um, heartening, positive thing that Louisville has come across that they've been not, not surprised, but they've been pleasantly um, glad to discover that, uh, that there's a lot of guys who are actually like, actually Louisville sounds pretty great. And to mm-hmm. your point earlier, Jeff, that I think is really important with this job is it very much feels like the dawn is, is right around the corner. Like they're going to have an IARP decision by, by the end of the fall, you would think, um, b- before the end of the year, you would think, unless it takes more than it took, uh, for the NC State uh, whole situation, and that's even figuring uh, conservatively for how long that would take. Um, but you get a new coach in. You should have a new AD. Uh, they, they're whenever that <laughs> I don't know when that decision is going to be made. Uh, but you got to figure that a president and an AD will be in place at least by the end of the calendar year uh, at U of L or close. And then you throw in uh, the decision on the IARP. You know which I have been adamant the last couple months now with the way the NCAA constitution uh, language has changed and they're discouraging um, both divisions and conferences from uh, implementing postseason bans um, because of it, it, it unfairly punishing students who are currently on the team and not involved in whatever was going on. I increasingly think that they might get hit with some scholarship stuff and a big financial hit and a bunch of other stuff, but not the postseason ban. And then next thing you know, Louisville has an opportunity to take advantage of the resources yep. 
of the name of uh, uh, on the front of their jerseys of the the league they're in and, and start to get some momentum so and, and you kind of and we go back to what we opened the whole podcast with was acc talk yeah and how it's kind of been down like you know why can't louisville be a top three team for the next however many years after all the dust kind of settles you know why isn't it top there's 10 no reason job not again, to think top yeah. three in the league i mean exactly there's no reason not to think they can get back to where they were you know before the last few years yeah so we'll see um all right well last thing then real quick just uh, give me a give me a yes or no we've oh, mentioned boy. a bunch of names all do right. you think a name that we have not talked about will pop up that maybe has not been on lists uh, anywhere do you think there will like be pop a... up as the guy or pop up as like a legit candidate a legit oh, i'll say legit candidate do you yes. think that there will be another name that surprises all of us i do okay i do yeah i mean i just is that an yeah. educated guess that you need to now text me or is that a, uh, a... No, no 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 i don't think so i don't th- i just i just think that um you know, some of the names that we've thrown around, especially, you know, some of the, the, the Willard and the big man, and, and even, you know, the, some of the Holtman whispers, um, I don't know where they've come from. So it's like, that's fair. You know, how, how legitimate are they? And why can't another name pop up tomorrow and, and be kind of right there with them? Um, and so for that, I, I, that's why I think, you know, there, there's probably a couple of, of uh, turns still left in this search, I think. <laughs> That's my that's my language, yeah, baby. You got excited. I love I, a, I love a coaching carousel. Uh, Louisville head coach Jeff Borzello. Got it. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's very exciting. Well, Jeff, I'm the recruiting coordinator. Boom. There you, there you go. I, I like that. A recruiting coordinator and a data analyst walk into <laughs> walk into a Drake's on the first day of the NCAA tournament. There you go. You never know how that uh, that whole thing would shake out. Um, well, thank you for your time, my friend, and I appreciate it. And I know people will be uh, intrigued to listen to your thoughts on. Uh, on the job and uh hopefully we can do this again i don't know like six months or something like that we can do this again in six months i'll I'll (laughs) put it in my calendar all right thank you